Hey everyone, my name is Sahil and in today's video, we will cover a vital topic in electrical safety. We will understand the 2023 edition of NFPA 780 and its implications for lightning protection systems. By the end of this video, you will understand the 10 most critical parameters of NFPA 780. This edition of the standard covers traditional lightning protection techniques for a wide range of structures such as ordinary buildings, structures of wind turbines, watercraft, and those with flammable and explosive materials. The purpose of this standard is to safeguard people and property from the hazards of lightning strikes. Let's start by understanding the 10 most important parameters mentioned in the standard for an ideal lightning protection system. Starting with the first parameter, the materials. High grade copper, or copper alloys with the same corrosion resistance are preferred. Conductors which are electrical grade aluminium with a minimum chemical composition of 99% aluminium can be used, but they should not be in contact with the copper roofing material or other copper surfaces. Bimetallic connectors or fittings should be used for bonding dissimilar metals. There is a detailed list provided in the standard. Secondly, Strike Termination Devices This device is a conductive metal component of the lightning protection system that is capable of receiving the lightning strike and conducting it to the ground. This includes air terminals, metal masks, overhead grounding conductors and many more examples. NFPA 780 provides detailed guidelines about the type, size and placement of different roofs. Note. The tip of the air terminal should not be less than 10 inches above the structure or area it is meant to protect. The overhead ground wires should be made of aluminium, copper, stainless steel, galvanized steel, etc. Number 3. Zones of protection The geometry of the structure decides the zones of protection. However, there are different methods like the protection angle method and the rolling sphere method that are used for determining them. I have explained both these methods in detail. The link to those videos are up here and also in the description. Number four, down conductors. The main conductor should interconnect all the strike termination devices in the structure. It should have two or more parts from the strike termination device connecting to the ground. Permanent metal handrails and ladders that are exposed to direct lightning strikes and have electrical continuity can be used as conductors. They should have a minimum thickness of 1.63 millimeters and the main conductor should not have a bend with an included angle of less than 90 degrees. At least two down conductors must be present for a structure and they should be as separated as possible. Their location will depend upon the position of the strike termination device, the earth conditions, the location of the underground metallic piping system and so on. You can watch our videos about down conductors here to learn more. The links will also be in the description. Number five, conductor fasteners and connectors. Connectors must withstand a pull test of 890 newtons. The fastener should be constructed from the same material as the conductor or be equally resistant to corrosion. Conductor connections should be either bolted, exothermically welded, be high compression or crimped types. Number six, grounding electrodes. The down conductors must be connected to one or more grounding electrodes dedicated to the lightning protection system. The ground rods must be either solid copper, copper clad steel or stainless steel depending on the soil type and corrosion in that area. There are different types of ground electrodes explained in the standard and these include rods, plates, radials and rings. At Axis, we have been manufacturing UL listed grounding electrodes for more than 30 years. You can learn a lot more about our ground electrodes by visiting our website here. Number seven, common bonding of grounded systems. All the grounded metallic conductors, including the metallic piping system that can become a path for lightning, should be interconnected to the lightning protection system in order to provide a common ground potential. This can include the metallic piping of water service lines, gas piping, 
underground conduits and more. You can watch this video to learn more about equipotential bonding. Number eight, potential equalization. Potential equalization is required to bring all the metal conducting parts to an equal potential level by bonding them. It is done based on three levels, ground level, roof level, and intermediate level potential equalization. The material size and other requirements for equipotential bonding are mentioned in the NFPA standard. We have a separate video on equipotential bonding. You can click here or the link in the description to learn more about equipotential bonding. Number nine, structural metallic systems. The metallic framework of the structure can be used as the main conductor of the lightning protection system, provided it offers a continuous path for current flow, but it can be used only if it is made in such a manner that it offers a continuous path for current flow according to the methods specified in the standard. Also, the strike termination devices must be connected to the metal framework using exterior conductors. The connections can be made by bonding, welding, brazing, drilling, and tapping. This framework is explained in depth in our video, how to select down conductors for lightning protection systems. The link is here and also in the description. Now, the last important parameter mentioned in NFPA 780, number 10, surge protection. This includes type one and type two surge protection devices, surge arresters, and surge protectors installed within the structure. Surge protection devices, also known as SPDs, are to be installed at the load side of an incoming or branching circuit line or any device. I hope you now have a clear picture of the 10 critical parameters included in NFPA 780. At Axis, we have a team of 40 plus engineers who are here to help you in designing, installing, and testing your lightning protection systems. Our products have also been used in substations, data centers, factories, and even in everyday residential and commercial buildings. Just like NFPA 780, there are other prominent international standards which are used in the design and installation of lightning protection systems. You can check out our video on IEC 62561 and IEC 62305 to learn more.